thank you all again so much for joining. Uh, this webinar is called Creating Classroom Culture Without the Classroom because we all find ourselves in this sort of strange new normal where we are working to connect with our students uh, without actually being able to see them in the classroom. One more time, I will remind you that uh, my friend and colleague, Annika, who works with me at Pear Deck, is going to be moderating the chat while I'm presenting. She is in the chat and can answer any pressing questions that you have. Please just make sure, if you are writing into the chat, that you are sending um, your messages to all panelists and attendees. And I'm going to actually close the chat so that I'm not um, trying to answer questions at the same time. Uh, you should be able to see my screen now. I am um, I am using Google Slides because that is what's most comfortable for me. Um, we're going to use Google Deck presentation in a moment. But the purpose of uh, of this webinar today is to give you the opportunity to learn about um, what resources Pear Deck has available to you um, to just connect with and continue to cultivate relationships with your students while you're not in the classroom with them. Um, and also to use some of our pre-made um, content or customize some of our pre-made content. We're going to just start by um, introducing ourselves. So my name is Brooke. I'm a customer success manager at Pear Deck. Um, and this is my Twitter handle here. So if you want to follow me on Twitter, I'm not that active there, but I'm working on it. Um, and this is my email down here as well. So if you have any, um, if you have any feedback for me after the webinar, this is my first time hosting this particular webinar. So I would welcome any constructive feedback that you have um, because we want to make sure that these are uh, as useful for you all as educators as possible. Okay, a quick agenda. We're going to just spend some time connecting with each other like you are students in my classroom. So we're going to actually use Pear Deck to facilitate just some nice, um, empathetic and compassionate conversation with each other. We'll discuss Pear Deck resources for creating um, classroom culture outside of the classroom. So We'll learn about what resources are available to you through Pear Deck to stay connected to your students. We'll also brainstorm some other ideas for building relationships remotely. Um, and then we'll review a checklist for best practices for setting up your virtual classroom. Uh, before we get started, I do just want to say um, thank you from all of us at Pear Deck. We, um, like I said, I'm a, I'm a former, seventh grade social studies teacher and I loved my students so much. So I, um, I missed them when I left the classroom and I can't imagine what you all are going through, but I know that this is hard and we really appreciate the work that you're doing to stay connected to your students and to keep um, teaching them to make sure that they have someone to talk to. Uh, you're doing the hard work and, and you're doing a great job. We've been really inspired by the educators all over the world. So thanks for joining today and thank you for what you're doing. Uh, I know that you all obviously joined in um, the Zoom, but I'm going to actually have you join my Pear Deck as well. So I'm going to open the Pear Deck add-on in Google Slides. Again, I'm using Google Slides because it's the platform that I'm most familiar with. Um, if you blinked, you may have missed me opening the add-on and we will be going through a little bit of the basics about how to use Pear Deck today. Um, if you aren't familiar with Pear Deck or have never used Pear Deck or seen Pear Deck used, I would um, encourage you to stay on this webinar because you will certainly see it in action um, and you'll get a good feel for the student experience but i'd also encourage you to join um, another one of our webinars um, we have several like getting they're called getting started webinars and they're running several times a day so um Annika, if you can actually drop the training page and the chat you can write more about how to build your first Pear Deck. You'll see a lot of that here today. Um, but I'm going to just open this add-on one more time so that you can make sure you, you see it. So um, I'm either going to click this Pear Deck button or I can just click Pear Deck for Google Slides add-on. If you don't have the add-on installed already, you can always click Get Add-ons and search for Pear Deck. Um, and for the sake of time, I'm going to just skip past that today. 
And I'm going to launch my, my Pear Deck presentation from here. So from the add-on, in order to have you join as students, I'm going to click that green Start Lesson button. And I'll do that one more time. I'm going to click Start Lesson. And then you'll see that you have two options from here. So you can launch an instructor-paced activity for real-time interactivity, which is what we're going to be doing today. But you can also just launch straight into asynchronous student-paced mode. And then you can send a link out to your students and they can work on your Pear Deck uh, on their own time asynchronously. For this uh, webinar, I'm going to launch an instructor-paced activity. And then I, I'm actually going to have you open your browser if it's not open already and join uh, my Pear Deck presentation. So I will drop a link to the presentation into the chat. There are two good ways for students to join your Pear Deck presentation. The first you'll see in just a moment, I will drop a link. Uh, I see in the chat, it doesn't have to be a second device. Um, you can uh, just open a new window in your browser or a new tab in your browser. So if you would like to join the Pear Deck presentation, please go to joinpd.com and then you will enter this join code. That's the first thing you'll be prompted to do. Green muffins yield underwhelmed umbrellas, G-M-Y-U-U. -U. I'm also going to click this give students a link button and I will just drop it in here in the chat if it's easier for you to click on that link. See, we've got 11 students connected, so I'll give you um, 30 more seconds for everyone to get connected. Again, the link to join the Pear Deck in your browser is in the chat. And you can also go to joinpd.com and enter code G-M-Y-U-U. -U. Green muffins yield underwhelmed umbrellas. I think you'll find that students find those, uh, <laughs> find those combinations of words very funny. We've got 30 students connected. I'll give you 20 more seconds. We'll go ahead and get started with 32 of you. If you are still joining, you can see that the code lives up here in um, the top right hand corner, G-M-Y-U-U. -U. And if for some reason you want to open the join code pop up again, you can always do that just by clicking on the code. You can also copy the link from here and open your teacher dashboard. We're going to just get started by introducing ourselves to one another. I saw that we have educators from all over the United States who've joined today, from Italy, the UK, um, from Dubai as well. So it's lovely to have all of you here. Um, thank you for joining whatever time of day it is for you, wherever you are in the world. Uh, I want to find that out now, though. So this is your first interactive Pear Deck slide of this webinar. I see that we already have five of 35, 36 responses. So please use the heart on your screen to indicate where you're coming from, where you're calling in from today. As you're doing that, I'm just going to click Show Responses. Oops. And you might be able to see the hearts moving around. So we really do have people from all over the world. Welcome. Thank you so much for calling in. I'm also going to lock your screens to, <laughs> to avoid the, um, the call to move your heart all over the, the screen. Uh, but welcome. Thank you for, for joining. Um, I love this. Um, I love this slide because we've been using it in all of our webinars feels nice to know that um, educators all over the world are figuring out, figuring it out alongside us. Okay, another thing that I would love to hear from you today, this is a text slide. So I'm going to give you um, one minute to respond to this. What's one thing you love about your class or your school? 
this is also a great response or a, excuse me, a great um, sort of activity to do with students. Um, you know, what's one thing that you love about going to school every day? What's one thing that you love about your physical classroom? And then I'll share them as they're coming in. It looks like we have about half of them right now. So in response to what's one thing that you love about your class or your school, people wrote, give me a second for my Wi-Fi to respond. The students have a great sense of humor. I love that my seventh graders had a great sense of humor as well. Sometimes it was at my expense, but such is the life of a person working with 13 year olds. The teachers are very supportive. Um, I think that's something that we are maybe forgetting that, you know, you don't get to see your colleagues every day. And that's definitely something that I miss as well. Well, just getting to just be in my office. That we're like a family, seeing the kids. I'm struggling not being with the kids, definitely. Um, I hope that this webinar, even though you can't physically be with them, I hope that this webinar will make it feel a little bit easier um, to stay connected to them. Okay, what's one thing you're worried about losing in a distance learning environment? Oops, sorry. I'm seeing a lot of, um, a lot of people writing in just the relationship piece with my students, which is, really real, you know, you work really hard to make that connection. I'm gonna show these responses. Um, I'll also make sure that we share out some of these responses after the fact. Um, we will uh, be working to share out a recording and also um, this deck, and we'll share out some of the resources that we are using, that we use to actually build this deck too reaching all my students, losing the physical and close interaction, definitely. I found that um, I've just sort of like lost the energy that I sort of benefit from when I'm in front of people too. Having an all class discussion, definitely. I hope that the personal connection piece, um, having an all class discussion, um, I saw someone wrote in also, just not all of your students have been able to complete their work yet. So I hope that Pear Deck can be a way for you to stay connected to these students during this time. I'm going to hide these responses. Okay, thank you so much for sharing. Um, I hope that um, it is some sense, provides some sense of comfort to know that um, teachers all over the world are figuring this out together. We are also trying to figure it out here at Pear Deck. And in that spirit, um, we, I'm going to just share some um, of the ideas that you already have for creating classroom culture outside of the classroom. And then I'll share what we are doing at Pear Deck. So if you could use this text slide, I'm going to give you a little bit longer for this one. I'm going to just use the timer here. I'll give you three minutes and then reassess where we're at based on the number of responses that we have. But what are some ideas you already have for creating classroom culture outside of the classroom? Zoom playground meetings. I love that. I'm going to show some of the responses that I'm seeing come in. Um, iMovie using pictures from families. 
I love that giving kids the opportunity to see what their classmates are doing um, outside of school, uh, still working on it. Very understandable. I saw someone said Zoom Playground using Google Forms, awesome. Teams, sharing logos invented by students, portfolio sharing, I love it. I'm going to give you about 20 more seconds if you want to enter anything in here. Again, I will work on sharing out these ideas after the webinar, so uh, hopefully you can if, if there's something that like really inspired you, hopefully you can use that and, and take inspiration from other educators. If you are on Twitter or social media, um, I mentioned when we started the meeting that I am not that good at Twitter, but I'm working on it. Uh, but Please feel free to share these with Pear Deck on Twitter as well. We're trying to um, share out with our, our base of educators um, best practices from around the world. So please feel free to share that with us and, and we'll work on getting that out to um, your fellow teachers. Okay, so uh, we're actually going to dive in now to um, some of the resources that Pear Deck has available for you, they're pre-made, they're fully customizable, but they're ready to use. Um, a lot of them are in template form, and we're going to just walk through easy ways to stay connected to your students through non-instructional content and how to use Pear Deck to do that. So the first thing that I want to look at are social emotional learning slides. So this is a stressful time, right? This is really, hard. Um, and I love that these social emotional learning slides give students the chance to anonymously share with you all um, either, you know, what's stressing them out today. If some, if it's, if, if their emotions are too overwhelming for them, um, that they just can't fully participate in the video call today, for example. I love this stress check slide and especially this what's filling your bucket today. These are two of my favorite um, slides that Pear Deck has available for educators. And in about three slides, I'll show you exactly where you can find all of these. But it's a great way, um, even if you just add it in at the beginning of your instructional content, to take a temperature check um, of where where your students are coming from that morning or that afternoon. Uh, we also have pre-made slides that just allow you to facilitate students learning more about one another and you learning a little bit more about them. So fun games like if you were an animal, which one would you be and why? What's your favorite place you've traveled or what's one place that you're really excited to travel to next with your family or where do you dream about traveling? Um, it's also a really nice way for students to recognize one another. My uh, good friend is a teacher and one of her students just had a birthday and she threw a birthday party using Pear Deck and Zoom for her student and asked, what's your favorite thing about this student? And so it was a nice way, even though students couldn't be together to celebrate, for them to throw a little party for their classmate and share what their favorite thing about their, their classmate is. We also have um, critical thinking and classroom norms and self-recognition slides. So uh, you can talk about even setting new classroom norms or new learning norms for this uh, new time of distance learning. So um, working together as a group to set expectations for each other and for ourselves. Uh, you can talk about what's exciting students, what content is exciting students, or what's something that they are proud of or really like to do during this time at home um, with their families or whoever uh, it is that they live with. This is an interactive slide and I'm going to give you, it's, it's 10.23, I'm going to give you uh, the next three minutes to just explore these templates. So there are five of them that I want you to look at, but um, this linked, this link here, the templates landing page has all of our pre-made uh, content ready to use. We've talked about celebrating students, discussing hard topics, social emotional learning, 
practicing gratitude and building community, but I would encourage you to check out whatever is calling to you most. So again, it's just turned 1024. I'll bring us back together, oops, sorry, in about three minutes. Linny asked, um, she's not sure, sure how she's, he or she is supposed to be exploring. Um, so from the, from the Pear Deck that you joined, so if you look back in your browser at the Pear Deck screen, this is a Pear Deck web slide. And you should see that the, sp the screen has split. Oops, sorry about that. You should see that the screen has split and there is a web page on, um, on the right-hand side of your student screen. And I can also drop it into the chat as well. So that you can have the link and explore that way too. I'll give you about one more minute to look through those template examples. Just as a reminder, you can make copies of these template decks and they're fully customizable. So you can choose to just use the graphics if they work best for you. You can use them exactly as they exist um, or you can uh, change the prompt or the, even the interactivity type that's already on the template slide. Um, so that it works best for you. Again, we'll be sending out all of these links after the fact, um, but we're going to go ahead and move on now just for the sake of time. We have about 20 minutes left. I'm going to look at some other ideas. Another idea that I would love for you to participate in from the Pear Deck itself is to um, share your space. This is a text slide, so tell us about where you're learning. This is great with students to, to get a feeling for what their peers' um, new normal looks like. So I'm going to show my responses. Please bear with me as my uh, wireless is a little bit slow today. We're all figuring out how to work from home, including me. You can also have students draw their space. So um, I had had you write in what your space looked like, where you were working from. And if you have younger students or you feel like it might just work better to have them 
draw the space that they're working in, then you can always make this a drawing slide as well. So I like this combination of slides because um, from the add-on in Google Slides or the add-in in PowerPoint Online, you can always update the interactivity type. So if you would rather it be a text slide, you can change that from the add-on. If you'd rather it be a drawing or a draggable slide, you can take the templates as a foundation and then you can make them work best for you. Seeing a lot of people drawing smiley faces, which is great. <laughs> I'm going to move on quickly. This is a, a screenshot of our team. Um, this is a screenshot of our Pear Deck team last week on our um, full company-wide all team call. This is about 25 of the 50 of us. This is, of course, just a great way to stay connected to one another. Um, in this instance, I used a draggable. Um, you can use draggables to maybe prompt students to say who's someone you miss or when you are learning about find when you're learning about zoom or joining video calls you can um, say you know drag the blue dot to your picture on the screen Kelly asked can you change the type of response as you are presenting it's a good question and you can't change the type of response as you're presenting but I do want to share that especially in this type of deck when you are checking in with students about topics that can be hard, you can always um, ask follow-up questions by dropping in a new prompt. So if I click new prompt here, oops, I can find it. There we go. If I click new prompt from my screen here, I can drop in new um, template slides right in the middle of my presentation. If I scroll to the right, you'll see that I have a lot of options here. And then I can also ask different question types with the same content. So this was a draggable, but if I wanted to ask a drawing or a text question with that um, question type instead, then I could just drop that new prompt in. So if I wanted to um, add a text slide in, I could click that it would automatically add that new slide into my presentation. And then I could reprompt students to use the text slide instead or the text feature, text response feature instead. Okay. For the sake of time, I'm going to give you about 30 seconds to respond to this one. What ideas do you have to share? I would also encourage you in this, um, I would also encourage you in this slide to write in what ideas do you want to work on? So what's something that you have in mind, especially for staying connected to students that you haven't had the opportunity to try yet? I'm going to give you a little bit more time. I'm still seeing a lot of people saying that they haven't tried everything that they want to try because they're still adjusting, which is fully understandable. Part of the reason that we are hosting this webinar today and especially showing you a lot about the pre-made templates that Pear Deck has available is because we sort of came to a screeching halt and all of our work had to be turned on its head, basically. So we hope that the template slides and the content that we already have made and available for you will help to lighten that um, load a little bit, will help to make hopefully the burden not feel quite so heavy. Um, so I'm going to just share some of these responses. Um, checking Pear Deck for inclusivity. Awesome. I do want to mention that uh, we, we have an integration with um, Microsoft's Immersive Reader. Annika, if you wouldn't mind dropping a link to um, more about Immersive Reader in the chat. Immersive Reader is great for, is great in the classroom and is an option for students who need um, to modify the way that they're reading um, text on the screen. If you have um, English language learners or um, 
students who are attempting to learn a second language, uh, the immersive reader translates the text and can read aloud for them in the, the language that's easiest for them to listen to. Um, that is a really uh, exciting inclusivity feature uh, that we launched earlier this spring. Taking them on a virtual field trip altogether, I love this. I would encourage all of you to check out um, museums all over the world do have virtual field trips and you can link the tours in Pear Deck. So you can link in using a Pear Deck web slide out to a virtual tour. Um, I was took a tour of the Museum of Natural History in New York City with my niece yesterday. Uh, she loved to see the elephants, um, but taking a virtual field trip is a great idea and it feels fun. <laughs> Check-ins with students using the templates, great. Okay, I'm going to hide the responses and unlock your screens. Uh, Julie just asked a great question. Should the students have two screens set up as well? Sorry. Uh, students don't need to have two screens set up uh, generally, it will take a little bit of practice, but I'm finding that teachers are just prompting them to switch back and forth between the Zoom meeting, so that acts as um, what would normally be your projector or your big board in the front of your classroom, and then back to their browser. So it will take some practice for sure. Um, generally, I just tell teachers to prompt them to look down um, and click on the Zoom icon and then click back to their browser icon. Um, I hope that the template slides will be a nice way for you to practice a little bit what this looks like. But if you find that that video calls and video calls aren't working best for you, um, you can always try uh, student paced mode or asynchronous learning as well um, for the content part of it. Um, and you can always turn on student pace mode from a live session or as you saw at the beginning of the webinar, you can launch right into student paced mode. Okay, I'm also going to talk about some curated decks, so pre-made materials that we've worked with um, other ed education companies and partners to create that we hope will inspire some awe and some wonder and connect your class with um, happy and uh, joyful or interesting news, um, which is something I think we can all use right now. So the first thing that I want to share with you are weekly wonders. So this is a weekly release of templates. Uh, it's a full deck of templates, one that's geared toward elementary school. So six years old through um, 10 or 11 years old, one for middle school students. So 11, 12 through 14, and then one for high school learners. So anywhere 14 plus, 14 through 18 years old. And they're built around pieces of awe-inspiring content. So you can see um, that this is a Pear Deck web slide again, and you can explore the weekly wonders. I will give you um, two minutes if you want to browse through them. I'm also going to toggle to them on my screen. So uh, I'll share out the link in the chat. So this is a link to our weekly wonders. Again, new content weekly that is curated by age and grade level. And it's also built around our five teaching truths that we value at Pear Deck. So our five teaching truths are tackle tenacity, excavate and expand, anticipate awesome, cultivate compassion, which is one that feels so important right now, and then hand it over or let students um, continue the exploration of a topic. We'll always include prompts that will help to hopefully stimulate laughter and joy and curiosity. Um, and I, I know someone earlier said that they miss just having classroom discussions, and I think these weekly wonders can be a really great tool for bringing students together on a video call, even if it's after they've completed the deck on their own time asynchronously to have a classroom discussion. I will give you uh, about a minute more to just scroll through the weekly wonders and take in uh, what those topics look like.
Another curated uh, set of decks that I am really excited about are our Newzella daily decks. So whether or not you're fam familiar with Newzella, they are a fun partner of ours and we um, every week take five Newzella articles and build Pear Deck's unique student engagement around those articles. So each deck is organized into a sequence of activities that's simple enough for any age group to complete makes it easy um, to keep practicing literacy, which I'm, as I'm sure you all know is, is a skill that um, needs to be developed and kept up with, and is also a great way to build critical thinking skills and global awareness around news content and around the way that you take in the news. So I really want to, if you could actually just direct, um, I'll give you a second to explore and then I'll, I'll have you come back to the Zoom. So I'll give you two minutes to explore the Newzella Daily Decks and then I'll bring you back and we'll actually look, walk through what it looks like to use one of those. One more minute of exploring those daily decks. Okay, so what I would, would like you to do, I'm going to pull you out of exploring for a second. I'm going to give you a little bit of time at the end to ask questions about all of these, but I would love it if you could click back into the Zoom screen so, um, so that you can see what I'm presenting. And we're just going to walk through what it actually looks like to use one of these. These new Zealand a daily deck. weekly wonder stacks will be early so i'm going to click over to this um, new Zella daily news page and i'm going to just drop this link into the chat as well so this is where our daily decks live and if you would like to have the new Zella daily decks delivered to your inbox so receive an email when the um the new decks are pushed out on sunday nights you can sign up from this page too so you can see this form here, but you can click on any of these decks. <clears throat> so I'm going to click on turtles the size of cars and it will take me to a new page where I can copy uh, the presentation into my Google Drive. You can browse through it first if you'd like. You can also find links to it. You can share it out on social media and you can find the subjects that it relates to. But I'm going to copy this file to Drive. It will then copy it to my Google Drive once I click make a copy and it will launch it right from Google Slide, right into Google Slides from there as well. So you're ready to go and to get started. So you'll see that now I have this copy of the Newzella Daily Deck in my slides. There are GIFs here that you can um, choose to remove, but they are helpful when you're learning how to get started. And I love also that our team has put some prompts here in the Google Slides notes so that you can learn um, how to best 
use these decks with your students. And I also think that these prompts down here are helpful to give to students as well. So um, first you will log in with your Newzella account and you can assign the article. If your school or district pays for Newzella, um, you can assign the article in a specific reading level. If you if if you are just working on a free Newzella account, that's totally fine and you will still have full access to the article. You will just need to make sure that you're prompting students or parents, whoever is helping you facilitate this, to change the reading level in Newzella. So you can see that you can do that here. You can also assign on a free account, you can assign the, um, the article to students as well. So this is the max reading level. I can change it so that it's easier for my younger students to read. And then they'll read through the article. And then you can come back to the Pear Deck interactivity together. So you can always customize this. So um, I did my teacher training with second graders and I already know that fossil discoveries might not be the best way to frame this or that I might have to do some extra teaching for fossil discovery. So if I were teaching second graders, um, like six, seven year olds, I might want to change this wording and you can of course choose to do that. You can also choose to change the activity or the, um, the interactivity type here too. So if I open my add-on, my Pear Deck add-on, right now this is a drawing slide and I can see that because it says that it's a drawing slide down here. And you can also see the purpose of this activity. So use this template to help students separate different parts of the reading. If I wanted this to be a draggable, I could just come to my Pear Deck add on this sidebar here and I could click draggable. And then I would just change the interactivity type if I wanted it to be different. I could also make it a text slide if I wanted students to be practicing writing in complete sentences, writing about main ideas and topic sentences or identifying the topic sentence and writing it into a text box. Whatever works best for you, I would encourage you to change up the interactivity based on that. I see a question in the chat. If we have a Newzella account, can we create our own deck? Absolutely. So you can always link using a Pear Deck web slide. You can always link out to a Newzella article um, or you can send the Newzella article, assign the Newzella article ahead of time and use these daily decks as inspiration if you want. This type of deck can be assigned asynchronously as well. So my internet connection is a little slow. I apologize. So it's taking longer to change this interactivity type, but um, you can assign this asynchronously as a student paced deck. So students will read the article and then complete these activities on their own time. It will automatically save their responses. And then if you want to have a video call about it after the fact, you can always reopen your teacher dashboard from your sessions page. I'll drop that link into the chat in a minute. Um, you can reopen your teacher dashboard to review their responses after the fact and then facilitate a class discussion on a video call or in a chat or something like that after. Good question. Going to jump back to the teacher page, the Pear Deck for just a minute. And we're gonna talk about getting technical. So we've looked at our templates, we've looked at our curated decks, the Weekly Wonders and the Newzella Daily Decks. All of these can be found on our website and we will also share out um, the links in a follow-up email after this webinar. But let's talk a little bit about how you and your students will literally connect to one another to stay connected figuratively. So first, if you could write in, what communication tools are you using right now? Are you relying on video calls or are you um, using maybe something like Flipgrid, um, Google Meet? I would say that whatever your answer is here, if it works best for you, then it's the best tool for you to be using. Uh, there are so many new things happening right now that whatever you feel most comfortable with is what I would encourage you to keep using. We do have a couple of checklists, Zoom, Class Dojo, Google Classroom, awesome. 
Flipgrid just beginning, great. We do have a checklist that we're going to go through for video calls specifically, because typically your classroom would look like this. It of course doesn't anymore. Uh, we hope that it will again very soon, but in a remote teaching environment, classrooms might look like this. There are kittens perhaps sitting on students' laps. There are family members all around. And so we have to facilitate connections in a really different way. I know that this is a lot of text on the screen and we will share this out after the fact, but the first thing that you wanna make sure that you're doing is just setting up your device. So I think for easiest setup, you'll want two screens or devices. I'm working on two screens right now. I have my laptop and another, another screen that I'm looking at. If you want to use your phone as a teacher dashboard, for example, you can always do that. Or if you have an iPad or a, a different computer, you can do that. From within Pear Deck, um, my colleague Nick always says that great things live behind these three little dots. So you can always open your teacher dashboard where you can see responses coming in. I've been monitoring your responses all along. I haven't actually shown you this yet. If you aren't familiar with how the teacher dashboard works, again, I would say um, to join one of our student paced um, sessions or uh, another one of our getting started webinars, but you can always be running this teacher dashboard from a different device. And I would encourage you to set two of them up if you're able to. Um, on your primary device, you'll want to start your Pear Deck session and your video conference session if that's how you're connecting to students. And then in the video conference platform, share your projector view. So that's what I've been doing with you. This is my projector view. And then I just showed you my teacher dashboard, but I had it on a different screen so that teacher students can still feel um, confident responding anonymously. I can project their responses anonymously for their classmates on my new projector view. In this case, it's a Zoom meeting. And then I can see their individual responses attached to their names so that I can be individually checking in with them during or after the fact. So number three says, on your second device or screen, open the teacher dashboard, which I've done. And then you'll want to share both the link to your video conference call with all of your students. And if you'd like, you can share the link to your Pear Deck session as well, if that's easier for you. So notice that the student view works well on iPads. Annika answered in the chat, but the, the student view works great on iPads. It works great on almost any medium to large screened device. If you don't have two devices, again, do not worry about that. Most of us do not. I had to go get my monitor and bring it to my, my home, but you can open both windows on the same device and just shrink your windows so that they fit next to each other. And then you can actually choose which of those to share on Zoom. So you can just share your projector view while running the dashboard and the presentation from behind the scenes and students won't see that. And you'll want to figure out the best way to prompt your students. So this is a checklist that I hope will be helpful. Um, students won't need two devices, but they will need two views. One that will mimic the projector and then the other that will allow them to be responding in Pear Deck. You'll want them to open two windows this might take a little bit of practice and it may not go perfectly the first time. Um, I, I would encourage you before I joined this webinar, I was practicing with my siblings actually because we're all just kind of figuring out how this works best. So um, it may take a little bit of practicing with your fam family at home, but um, Pear Deck is super easy to use. And I promise that with a little bit of practice, it will definitely um, get easier and, and feel a little bit more natural with time. You'll also want to make sure that you're continuing to prompt students to be looking at the projector so that they can see the responses from other students. Um, so when you are projecting responses and sharing those anonymous responses, you'll want to make sure that you're doing that on the projector view and making sure that students can see it. We have about one minute left until I need to end this. Uh, we can prob probably take a minute, a minute and a half, but I need to end this webinar. Um, I know this was a lot of information. We have another webinar starting after this one, I believe. 
So we will have to end at five and a half, four and a half till. Um, we will send out all of this information in, a, in an email after. I really hope that this was useful for you. I know it was a lot of information. I think that the templates are the easiest way to get started. Um, and you can always find your templates from your Pear Deck add-on in the sidebar here. So the templates live here. They also live on our templates landing page. I shared out a link to that, but we'll email it to you again. Um, I would say start small if you're feeling overwhelmed. Start with one of our curated decks like this New Zella Daily Deck or one of our Weekly Wonders. It's a great way to connect with students, to talk to them about things that are going on um, in the world. If you have any questions, you can email me. You can uh, send us an email at help at peardeck.com. We also have a chat box on our website. Please feel free to write in with questions. Um, and I'm going to end this webinar in just a, in just a minute, but um, I hope that this was useful and uh, stay safe and healthy out there, everyone. Uh, we'll talk to you again soon.